Midrand is an unlikely location for a bank headquarters, but African Bank isn't an ordinary bank. It doesn't take deposits, but what it has done for the better part of the last 20 years is make short-term micro-loans available. These are loans that are made at very high interest rates with generally quite high defaults. In the last 18 months or so, there's been a lot of pressure on African Bank. This is a company that has gone from a share price of over 40 Rand with a dividend yield as a mighty 7% to a share price as low as 7 Rand in recent weeks. The chief executive, Leon Kokinis, is under extraordinary pressure to perform. Institutional investors are taking big positions, but it is a bank that has seen its international credit downgraded recently. It's becoming more expensive for African Bank to borrow money cheaply and to lend it out at higher rates. Let's go inside the call centre here at African Bank in Midrand for tonight's special episode of Tonight with Bruce Whitfield. Leon. Appreciate you. Very good, very good. Now tell me about the call centre. Yeah, sure. Uh, what we do here? So Leon, when we look at African Bank, the news flow seems to be getting worse and worse. You've had a ratings downgrade fairly recently, You've seen the share price slump. Just how tough are things right now for you as Chief Executive of African Bank? I think firstly you've got to unpack what actually happened in our results in, in, in the half year. Yes, there's been a lot of negative news flow, including the ratings downgrade, which we did expect was going to come. But what we did at the end at, for the half year was we put aside a, a two and a half billion rand provision to protect the business going forward. The environment out there is tough and it's not going to get easier. The economy's in a tough place. I don't, I don't believe 2014 or 2015 is going to get any easier. And therefore, we as a board decided to take a provision, put it aside, protect the business and ensure that from our next reporting period for the second half of the year and beyond that, we would then start to show that it, uh, the turnaround has in fact occurred. It's not the first provision you've taken, you've taken several in the past as well. Can you reassure your investors that this is the last one before the cycle turns for African Bank? Yeah, sure. I think the previous provisions that, that were the provision surprises were spe specific provisions. In other words, they were provisions on, uh, on loans that had become non-performing. This is a general provision and it's something we've set aside against the performing portfolio to protect the business from the heightened level of um, uh, risk and um, and you know just strain out there. When, when we look at it, I mean, there is a lot of speculation as to whether or not you will need to raise more capital in the second half of this year. The expectation is that you will need to do so simply because your cash flows are not giving you the organic capital growth that you need. Look, the organic growth in our capital will come. Uh, so it really is a, a question of uh, timing. We did unpack in quite a lot of detail in the half year results the difference between uh, what the group position looks like with Ellerines being a significant drain of capital and the bank which is far less uh, in it really from a bank's perspective it's much more a timing of building up its capital. So we are busy um, as we speak dealing with a number of these issues and uh, clearly if uh, and when we are able to communicate our, um, our strategic um, choices that we've made, then we will do so and it, it shouldn't be in the too, too, long, too distant future. Uh, Ellerines is the real lemon in this, particular, in this particular pie. You bought it and um, the, the Peter Squires, the chief executive, uh, was terribly excited when you sold it to him. Eric Ellerine made a personal phone call to congratulate you on the deal. It's the deal that you must rue every single day of your life. First thing when you wake up in the morning you go, why did I buy Ellerines? <laughs> You know, I have a philosophy that says you can't do anything about the past, you must do, but you can do everything about the future. Our timing, uh, entering Ellerines uh, at the time that we did was clearly unfortunate. Uh, the economy got a lot worse. Uh, we've struggled to actually try and achieve what we wanted to do on the acquisition. The whole idea was to try and bring cheaper access to finance to the customers in the furniture industry. And we've really battled to do that, to be honest. Um, and so I can't do anything about the past, but I can do everything about the future. It's been up for sale for the last year or so. Uh, I'm told from the retail sector that you've had a number of approaches. People are very interested in the Ellerine sites that are occupied, particularly in small towns South Africa. You've resisted some of, some of the offers that have come toward you. Why haven't you just offloaded this thing and got rid of it? No, I think that wouldn't be a fair uh, comment. Um, what we said, we announced, in, when we announced the rights issue in August of last year, we also announced the fact that we would be selling Ellerines. We didn't put a time frame on it. The reason we did it is if people are going to invest in capital into the group, they need to be aware of what the strategic 
future looks like in terms of ellerines as well. Um, we needed to get the rights issue behind us, which only happened at the end of uh, December, and we've been working on the Ellerines um, transactions since then. Um, so it's not a resistance on our side, it's more just a timing. Okay, when does it get sold? Is there still interest, or is the value of Ellerines slipping on a daily basis and could be a fire sale ultimately? You know, there's definitely interest. Ellerines is perceived, as you said, in a particularly negative light. It's, a, it's, it's one of the biggest networks uh, in the country, retail networks. It's been around for a long, long time. Uh, it has high brand loyalty. It has struggled and we have struggled with it. It remains a valuable asset for other retailers. Um, time frames? And, you know, I can't really at, at this stage say when. All I can tell you is we understand the necessity for uh, Would it be with a welcome Christmas present for Leon Kikinis to have this thing sold in the second half of this year? <laughs> I'll, I'll repeat what I'm saying, is that <laughs> I, I, it's certainly a, a, a matter of very high priority for us. And so uh, I'm, I'm sure we will announce something. Your, your business model is under siege. You face lots of competition from legal and illegal micro lenders in the market. You've got an economy which is grinding to a halt. We've got the mining sector crisis at the moment, where mine workers in Rustenburg, for example, have been without work for nearly six months. We, we're heading to potentially a recessionary environment. How do you survive that as a micro lender trying to collect debts that are more than 18 months old? You know, I can tell you that we have been, we, we, are, we are constant in the marketplace. The one thing we are known for by our customers is that we're always there. Uh, we've been through these cycles before. Uh, it's just today there's, a, there's the here and now cycle. We've seen the cycle in the past in 2000. We've seen it again in 2007. So one's just got to remain very focused on the long term. Uh, there will always be a need for our services in this market by customers. We don't chop and change. We don't come in and go out uh, at a whim. We hear consistently, yes, it's a tough environment. And as you say, it's going to remain a very tough environment in the period ahead of us. Um, but at the same time, that's ex exactly when you should start to understand what's happening to your customers, offer them uh, mechanisms to help alleviate the pressure that they're under. In this call center here that you're filming today, we, in fact, during the course of the last uh, few months, have launched a highly successful campaign, which uh, goes to customers who are paying us uh, an installment, paying us part of an installment consistently, and we offer them the ability to extend the term of the... Isn't of that high risk though? You, you're taking people who are struggling, they are managing to pay off a proportion of a debt, you're extending it for a longer period of time. Doesn't that raise the risk over time of default? No, quite the contrary. It actually does the opposite. It gives the customer hope that they can actually uh, come out of it. You stop raising all the arrears, interest, etc. So, so it really gives, you come to an arrangement with the customer which gives them hope that they can actually uh, emerge out of the situation that they're in. Credit interest has been a crucial part of the African bank business since its inception nearly 20 years ago when you, when you co-founded it. Um, Treasury is looking at this and saying we need to remodel it. That's a big threat surely to the business. It's not National Treasury, it's a National Credit Regulator who's looking at the pricing uh, and, and the pricing parameters. Um, you know, our approach to regulation, when you're the market leader, you are always going to be at the forefront of regulatory developments. Our approach is to be transparent, to be um, absolutely open with the regulators, work with them. Our results have shown that, in fact, our interest rates were not high enough to be able to deal with um, the risks that actually emerged. But that's the difference in interest rates, uh, inter in your interest rate setting, which was a strategic mistake as well. You kept, you try to keep interest rates low, extend the terms of loans. When the defaults came, you were caught short on this particular front. But the, in uh, but the, but the credit insurance policies, that's what's under pressure. Uh, both the, the interest rates, uh, the formulas, as well as, the, as, as well as insurance are under debate. I can say that we have had made good progress with the regulators around credit insurance. Originally people assumed credit insurance uh, thought about it in a particular way and people have actually forgotten or didn't realize the powerful rehabilitative nature of Credit Life. Well, one of your biggest critics on the credit insurance is, is former executive director of African Bank, Dave Willem. He's massively critical of the business model. Well, you know, everyone must have their own views. Um, uh, that's, that's his view. People are entitled to say what they want to say. At the end of the day, this business is 
very relevant for customers, has been for the last 20 years and will be so for the next many years. Is it still relevant for investors? We've seen in the last couple of months uh, Coronation take its stake in the business up to 22%. Standard's got about 8%. More recently the PIC has disclosed it's gone to over 15% and you've got Salem Investment Management sitting at over 5%. Nearly half the shares in the hands of four or five institutional investors. Now um, this suggests a great deal of institutional confidence um, I've spoken to them about your personal future. They say you're the right guy for now. Do you, do you see yourself running this business two years from now? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, I obviously serve at the behest of the board. Uh, I am committed and passionate about this business and it's in a tough space and I'm, I've got the energy uh, and commitment to get it into a better place. Um, one must always recognize that uh, you, you have to be relevant and you, you can't be arrogant and assume that you, that you hear forever. It's up to the board and the shareholders to decide that. In this period that we've been in, as you say, the board has been unanimously committed uh, towards me, and um, and so have the shareholders. Yeah, the shareholders say that your board, your board needs to be bolstered. You need stronger non-executive directors. You need some some executive directors. There was uh, a bit of a departure spree earlier on this year. Um, wh where are you in that process of, of securing new talent coming in? Yeah, no, we've made, made very good progress. We've still got stuff to do. Um, so, you know, you can't go through a period like this and not reflect on, on these issues as a board and uh, personally to understand what do you need to do to, to ensure that, the, that you don't uh, repeat the past and you actually move into the future. Uh, we have made good progress in, in, in the appointment of uh, executives. A new chief risk officer will be announced shortly. Um, we have strengthened the credit area of the business substantially in the last little while uh, and we will be making some new, further announcements soon in the executive space. In addition to that, obviously as a board we took stock of, of what happened and rightly so have to strengthen the board and we are in the process of appointing two non-execs independent uh, to come and help. Uh, help us in the future. Any takeover offers at seven rand, the institutions clearly think there's value to be had. What about other foreign banks, local banks, local institutions, anybody interested in doing a takeover of African Bank? Any approaches on that front? You know, I can only deal with the, with the issues that I can deal with, which are within my control. Uh, this is a fantastic company. It's clearly... Uh, is anyone knocking on the door, Leon? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> yeah, it, it implies that there might be interest. <laughs> I, I can't say anything in that regard. All I can say is that this is a great business. Leon Kikinis, thank you very much. Leon Kikinis, the chief executive of African Bank, taking it on the chin. Certainly shareholders of African Bank, institutional shareholders, expressing confidence in the long-term future of African Bank. There will be stormy waters to cross, no doubt, in the next couple of months. That's been tonight with Bruce.